Best place to have breakfast in Oxford. You can literally drink tea besides dead people. They were only 16. The lecture I gave at the University of Oxford was about scientific illustrations. It was a workshop that teaches scientists to draw in PowerPoint. It was a full room of scientists from the Dunn School of Pathology. It is the institute where penicillin was discovered. Look, this dude left his Nobel Prize here. It was a great honor that I get to give this workshop. Had I stayed as a regular clinical researcher, I don't think I would have this opportunity to give a lecture at Oxford because this opportunity came from a connection that I built via the scholarship that supported me to study scientific illustration. One of the winner, Lawrence, studied his PhD at Oxford. He helped me arrange the workshop. I also get to stay at the guest house of his college. Let me have my hair done, get dressed, and then I'll take you guys out to have a look at the college. This guy passed out in front of a pub in the suit. Welcome to the UK. Look at how beautiful their campus is. I wish I had studied here, but they don't have a scientific illustration degree. So I'm going up the stairs now. These are the stairs that goes into the dining hall that you see in the Harry Potter movies. Because I'm a guest at the guest house, so Lawrence can also book a dinner for me at the dining hall. The setup is very much like in the movies. There are these very long tables where students and faculties can sit on the two sides. There are these house elves slash waiters who are handing out of the food. However, we do need to pass the food around because they come in big portions that is meant for sharing. The appetizer was pumpkin soup. I already finished that. There are bread that you can have refills. The menu we had that evening was pork Sunday roast, cooked potatoes, and cooked red cabbage. It was very much like IKEA food. I mean, this is a student cafeteria after all. The dessert was something that resembled a chocolate cake. I didn't have much memory about it. It is what it is. I came back here very early in the morning to have breakfast, and I had the entire hall all by myself. It was super cool. And this is the early morning view of the college without tourists. Super chill. It's full of tourists during the day. I am going to show you the Tom Quad. If you go inside those little doors right there, then you get to see the room that I stayed in. Once you pass through the stone gate, you will find these stairs that goes all the way up into the castle. That is the bathroom. And then I'll climb up this very narrow spiral stairs that goes even further up. Then I can get to the door of my room. I have an electronic key now. Let me open it for you. It really has the vibe of a single scholar room. Don't mind the mess on my table. And here's a single bed. By the window, you can find the kettle for the tea and coffee. Let me show you the window view. I can see the entire Tom Quad from my window. Superb view. Some tourists are so unhinged. Look at her. There are restricted areas that tourists should not enter. Though, Lawrence also brought me to some exclusive student area that includes the room where Einstein stayed in. They even framed Einstein's handwriting. We actually filmed a video in the room in which Lawrence gave advice on how to apply for a PhD at Oxford. You can find the video in my Patreon and my YouTube membership page. Then I think it would be really cool to have a scientific illustration workshop in Einstein's room. Lawrence also liked the idea, so... Lawrence also liked the idea, so we started planning it. I started sending out posters because I'm a very proactive person. Uh, it turns out that the room has been fully booked for the upcoming two weeks. So we have to find another venue ASAP.
But I already sent out the posters, so the workshop has to happen. My classmate of Lauren studies at the Dunn School of Pathology. He kindly sent my poster to their department. Their staff members think that this can be a really good workshop for their scientists. Their scientists can learn the scientific illustration skills they need for publishing their research. They generously arranged a conference room for me. I was expecting that maybe eight people would show up. In the end, there were about 30 people. I was so excited about that. And the responses from participants were really positive and some of them hoped that there can be more of these tutorials. I started to develop these scientific illustration tutorials. Then COVID happened. Everything went into lockdown. There was no possibility for follow-up workshop. What should I do with those tutorials then? So I decided to upload them onto YouTube. That's right. It was a story from over two years ago, and that was the beginning of this Drobal Med channel.